Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. It has been a while since Glenn and I have been legally allowed to record at the same time and finally we're back together. We're going to bring you a list of our best roguelike games on Switch. If you enjoy the content then do consider sticking around. Remember we give away a free game to our subscriber most active on the channel. Cheers mate, yep, good to see you. It's nice to start to get back to normal hopefully. Now we know that roguelites are a genre that do divide opinion, but we are going for ones that have that gameplay loop of going on a run, feeling incredibly strong at times, dying, doing it again without the frustration, and they do it to a T. So that's what this list will focus on. So which ones make our list? Well, let's find out. Let's start off then by getting some of those big names out of the way, shall we? First up, we've got Dead Cells, which I know both of us love. We went to an expo back in the, the well, the days where you could go to expos. And I remember we met the developers of this and it was just such a wake up call that this channel might actually become a real thing. Yeah, plus it was apparent very early on just how good that game was gonna be. What I love about Dead Cells is the way that you unlock the vials, the different power-ups that you find, and whenever you go back for a new run, you can see them hanging from the ceiling, so it makes you feel as if you're getting better, even if you have just died. It's a very clever way of doing it. Yeah, that game's got some of the best music as well in any roguelite, and they've added so much content over the years. Next up then, we have to get rid of another one that everyone's gonna mention, and that is Hades. Yeah, this was really super giant's piece de resistance. Like, this is the best. It takes elements of Bastion, Transistor, and their other best titles, uh, and particularly the narrator and things like that, and it combines them all into one game. It's got a very good and slick repetitive, it is repetitive, I guess, loop, but it's also incredibly addictive, and I think this may have made our addictive games list. I can't quite remember, but yeah. Hades is well worthy of the Game of the Year awards that it's won, and that's why it's second on our list. Okay, next I'm gonna mention one that maybe people haven't heard of. It's a game called Atomic Crops. Now what's interesting about this one is it actually mixes in farm life simulation to an extent. You grow your crops and then the run starts and you will be attacked and you need to defend your crops. You can then go off into the wild and find extra areas where you'll find power ups and you need to get through the seasons and each season just changes things up a touch. It is quite difficult, maybe not as rewarding as some of the other ones on this list, but it's the fact that it's quite unique that draws me back in. Yeah, I don't think I played that one at all. I remember making the thumbnail for it, but I don't think I played that one. It looked decent. Next up then is one that, again, I think, Glenn, you're probably going to want to talk about, and it's Rogue Legacy. I didn't even consider this one. Yeah, Rogue Legacy is a very good game. Um, it has the, the very traditional idea of going back on your runs, although when you do defeat an area, it stays defeated even if you die, which is always nice. And its main uh, gameplay mechanic is that every time you die, you play as a descendant of your previous character, and you kind of take on a genetic imperfection of that character, and you have a unique ability because of that. It's actually a really interesting idea. Yeah, that's very cool. There was actually a more recent release that did the same thing. I forget the name because I'm not like you and I don't have one of those photographic memories, but it was like a side-scrolling Dark Souls clone, but it had the same thing when you died, you inherited a trait. That's very cool. Next up then is Moonlighter. Now Moonlight is another one, I think this is from 11-Bit Studios, and it takes on quite a familiar pixel art style now, but it's done so well. It's a good example of how no two pixel art games are the same. You know, it has that real artistic flair. It looks lovely. Almost looks like a if you combine like watercolor and pixel art. It has top-down dungeon crawling element, but it also has the shopkeeping aspect to the game, whereby you have your log and you gradually tweak the prices so that you can make the best sales on all of those things that you've gathered on your adventures. Have you played this one? I've played about an hour of it, so not enough to have any sort of proper opinion of it, but from what I saw and from what I've heard, definitely sounds like a very good game. Okay. 
Okay, next one then. In my opinion, to be honest, probably still the best in the genre. This is The Binding of Isaac. Now, we, Mark and I, played this game when the Switch first came out. Mark actually bought it before me, and I remember him like messaging me through the day and saying, this game's awful, what have I done? <laughs> and then um, played it a bit more and got the hang of it, and then convinced me to buy it, and it is a fantastic game. It's just so simple in terms of the layout. You have your, your basic dungeon rooms, don't you, with you know four doors pretty much to go through and choose your route. The enemies, I mean, it's gross to look at, let's be honest, but the power-ups are so good, the way your character transforms as you, as you get more, how no two runs ever are the same. It's such a good game. I think one of the best things about these... Um these games especially when they have co-op like this one is it really shows the character of the players for example glenn will be you know taking his time choosing wisely i'll be running and opening the spike chest just to the off chance that it gets a good reward and then dying over and over again while he just sits back and says what are you worried about but obviously in a co-op game that kind of affects both of you so it's not quite as simple as that it'll be yeah exactly that i'll be like right which way should we oh you've gone that oh you're dead okay <laughs> fair enough <laughs> Next one is definitely up there with Isaac for me as my favorite in the genre, and this is Bad North. Now in Bad North, you play as a Nordic tribe and you need to defend your island from invaders. You have different characters with different weapon types, such as archers or pikemen, and you need to position them in a way that you will keep your island safe. You move across the map and you can discover new areas, find new people to join, but if you are caught up by the enemy, you die and have to start again. I honestly think this is one of the best on there. Have you played this one, Mark? I actually played a bit of it back on mobile. So this is one of the good examples of where mo just because it's mobile doesn't mean it's bad. And in fact, it translates across really well, doesn't it? Personally, I'm a huge fan of first-person shooters, so having a first-person roguelite was a real win. And City of Brass was actually designed by many of the people that worked on the Bioshock series. It's really interesting. I mean, it follows a very similar premise to many of the roguelites we've spoken about, but obviously in the first-person view, it's quite different. Your character has a whip and a saber, and there are different classes that you can unlock. It's pretty brutal, I'm not going to lie, it's quite tough, but it also often goes on sale. It's worth keeping your eye out for and putting on your wish list, this one. Kind of gave me um, Prince of Persia vibes, but you know, obviously in a first-person view. And upsettingly, it hasn't got any motion controls, so, you know, that's sad. Next up, we've got Children of Mortar, which if you watch the channel, you know we covered their big update recently, and they've actually added in an entirely new game mode, which we affectionately termed Hades mode, which is exactly that. It's an entirely separate game from the main storyline, adds in loads of new abilities, it's got new features in there. And yeah, this game's brilliant. It did storytelling so well before Hades came along. This did a very similar thing whereby after each run, the story was progressed so well by the different family members. The next one I want to talk about is a game called Neon Abyss. Uh, this was published by Team 17, I think. And what I loved about this one is this is probably the most similar I've played to The Binding of Isaac in terms of the way that you get the power ups, how you feel about it as you go through the game. But it's set in a more 2D action platforming style. The runs are quite visceral. There's a happy, you've got a lot of um, bright colors, a lot of use of the color purple, yellow, that sort of thing. One thing I will say about it, which did let it down, is there was some serious stuttering on some of the bosses, which was unfortunate. I don't know if it's had a patch since then, but just in terms of sheer gameplay and the excitement it brings, it's definitely up there. Yeah, not one again that I've played, but it looks right up my alley. One that definitely is, is Void Bastards. Now, Glenn and I are massive fans of Red Dwarf, 
And this is basically Red Dwarf, the first person shooter roguelite. It's, it's brilliant. It's got that real, and I don't know, I don't really like saying this, but it's got very English humor. Like it's very much little in jokes that kind of people that live in this country would understand and everyone else would be like, oh look, that is so British. Yeah, funny enough, I've just bought this one, um, the physical version up, but I haven't played it yet. But I do know what you mean about that English humor. In terms of gameplay, you can choose your path as you move throughout space. So you choose which ship you want to board. It tells you kind of in a risk and reward sense what you can expect on there. Usually, obviously, the better rewards come from a more difficult ship. And there's a shop that you can visit, all the standard stuff. But again, in this first person view, and there's a stealth aspect to it as well. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely great game. And you unlock loads of new weapons. Really well worth picking up this one. And then that takes me on to another one then that I don't think Glenn's played, but I really liked it. It's God's Will Fall. Now, this had a really interesting premise whereby you take on uh, a band of Norse warriors and essentially each time all of them die, you would restart with a a brand new band and they have their own traits they'll be like different brothers and sisters and you move throughout this island that's filled with gods essentially and you go into different encounters and you could choose you're trying to choose characters that would work well for you so some, one of them might have a two-handed weapon be very strong but quite slow um, and you'll know that you're fighting a spider boss that's quick so you need to choose the right ones but if they fall in battle then another family member is going to be massively affected so they might become aggrieved and not be able to fight as well whereas someone else in the same party gets a huge boost to their fighting abilities because they're so enraged and they want to avenge their death or avenge their capture i should say really some nice ideas here now it wasn't perfect and there were quite a few bugs at launch it's had a couple of patches i believe you'll have to let me know down in the comments but i will be revisiting this one in a well it might you might even see it before you see this but i still thought it was an excellent concept and well executed Right, we're going to leave it there then. Um, usually when we do these sort of videos, we write down our picks and we make sure we haven't missed any obvious ones out. But we didn't want to do that this time because we wanted it to be very natural and just the ones that we, if they come from the top of our head, they're the ones we probably like the most. You know what I mean? So there are some ones we've missed. We know that things like Enter the Gungeon, um, Slay the Spire would be another one. Darkest Dungeon, definitely. Great games, but just not ones we wanted to talk about today. If there are any others that you want to talk about and you love, please do stick them in the comment section below. Lovely, yeah. So that is it. Our first video together in a long time. So I think the last ones were like the hidden gems and addictive games lists, which were, man, that was ages ago. Check out those. We'll pop links to them down in the top pin comment. And thanks so much for watching the channel. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. I'm smiling because I know, I know Glenn is, is bracing himself for the see ya, but really he loves it. See ya. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Thanks. Yeah, nice one. Like Mark says, it's lovely to do a video, proper video together again. Hopefully it'll be the first of many more to come. Take care, stay safe, of course. And until next time, happy gaming.